Right everyone, so I'm back for a new series. I've already done a couple of episodes so far where I'm breaking down some of the basics and trying to pick out some key points. It's easy for me sometimes to brush over stuff because I do it without thinking. But through some of the messages that I've received, I've had some fantastic messages of people saying they love the series. I'm really pleased if I can just help people in a little way. And what I want to do is just pick out some of the little bits that I perhaps go over quite quickly and highlight those. So I'm going to do a bit of a series. I've done a couple of episodes so far, and I'm just going to spend a short amount of time talking about some bits that I think are very specific. I tend to be very anal about what I do because I like a really, really good result. And at the end of the day with these dogs, you get out of them what you put into them. And remembering with Spaniels, they never switch off. So you really got to have them thinking in just the way that you want them to. So often I'm saying to a lot of my clients is that your dog's life is in one sphere. It cannot break down training from play. So although it seems really nice to just let your dog run around, that will be undoing the bits of training that you're doing probably long term. So for me, I always say to everyone, the second I step out the front gate, whatever it is that I'm doing with that dog, it is training of some sort. And as I just previously said, you get out of these dogs what you put into them. So if you're really, really regimental and you're very clear, you praise the things you want, you're clear about the things you don't want, the dog will totally understand where they stand. So today I'm going to do a little bit of some key points that are based around basic retrieves. So I'm going to try and highlight those and uh, explain them as I go through them rather than sort of going through at my normal speed, which for I know for a lot of people is very quick. So here we go. Right, so today the point is to try and go through some of the basic retrieves and some of the key points that I like to do, also the order that I'm working at. So we're going to start off with a very basic retrieve, um, that's out and back. Now one of the things with basic retrieving is you don't need a lot of space, okay? Often see people that can do really long mark retrieves, but they have no skill level in and around them. I don't work up in distance until I can do the bits in front of me really, really well. So this space here can't be any more than about five or six meters in width and probably about 10 or 15 meters in length. And I do a lot of my early training in this place here. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with picking out some key points with a basic retrieve. Now, quickly, firstly, uh, you'll often see me using lots of different types of retrieve. There's two of my favorites and they have two completely different points. One is the 150 gram rabbit dummy that you'll see me using a lot. I like that, it's very engaging. A lot of dogs really, really like it. I also like these high vis dummies. Some dogs can be a bit funnier about picking them, but if your dog likes them, early work it's very, very good because everything I'm doing at the beginning generally is visually based. Later, we start getting the dog to use their nose or I will be using things like rabbit skin balls if I'm just teaching hunting alone. But if we're talking about retrieving, which is what we are doing today, you like this, don't you, Trigger? Uh, Trigger, that was one of my old Triggers. Um, Billy, he likes this. Um, but because he likes this, when you're first trying to get a dog to pick something, you want that dog to be able to see the retrieve the second you send them so that they aren't in the habit of giving up, which can happen quite easy. So we're gonna do a basic retrieve. Now you see me turning a lot when I do that. So I'll just cover that quickly. I've done this in lots of videos. I will be repeating myself a lot, but I never know when people are coming in watching me for the first time. So if I'm ever turning away from the dog, I'll always lean over first to get the dog to keep up with me. Lean over, lean up, get the dog to keep up with me. If I'm gonna turn into the dog, what I tend to do is a short little tug back, tug, and then turn sharply. The problem is if you let the dog get ahead of you, you'll just trip over them when you turn. So if I'm turning to my right, I lean over before. Good boy, come on. <laughs> Sit. And if I'm turning to my left, I do a little tug first. Tug. Turn, 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 turn. And then sit. Okay. So you'll see me doing turning both ways regularly. So the first thing with a basic retrieve, and I've done lots and lots of videos on retrieving, but once you can do a retrieve, let's say a couple of meters out and back, I'm going to talk about the stance and how I like to stand. I'm just going to go a little bit further back. Come on. Good boy, Billy. Come on, Billy. Good boy, sit. 
So first thing is I want the dog pointing in the direction I'm pointing. I don't want to be stepping away from the dog. I don't want to be vastly behind the dog and I don't want to be in front of the dog. My front toe on my right foot is about level with his front feet. Okay. And I want him pointing forwards. What I don't want is him like this. Sit. That doesn't really ever tend to happen so much, but dogs are very uh, used to pointing inwards. I want that dog facing absolutely straight. And that's the thing that I want to start off with. Then when I'm going to use my retrieve, I'm obviously going to put that out. Now, a lot of dogs, when you put that retrieve out, can often start to move. Now, you'll see me using my training leads. This is something I try to promote a lot. It just stops the dog from going wrong. If he goes to lunge in and just tug back through the lead and stop him. On the same note, um, it allows me to then turn around, walk back, set the dog up. I've got no fussing around me. I don't have to try and shout at the dog or anything like that. I can literally just use the lead to stop him. And it always needs to be slack prior to me sending them. I don't want to hold tension through the lead to hold the dog in that sap position. He must know through little tugs like this that he's got to hold himself down. I'm going to let him pick this. I always do a stop whistle first and then I send the dog. Right. So I'm just going to do this basic retrieve. Good boy. Sit. Good lad. Good lad. Good boy. Sit. Good boy. Good boy. Dead. Now, when I take the retrieve off the dog, what I normally do, should have pointed that out there, is my left hand always goes on the lead first, and then my right hand goes on the retrieve. So I always say to my clients, left hand lead, right hand retrieve, left hand lead, right hand retrieve. That means as soon as I take the retrieve off the dog, I can stand up, step forward, and my dog's back to heel. I see a lot of dogs doing laps of their own as, <laughs> before they do anything. And that can all be safe, uh, avoided by using the training lead. The other point is these are so fine and light. The dogs don't even notice they've got them on. And so if you go far enough into your training, one day your dog is just going to do all this stuff without questioning you. Rather than, you know, shouting at the dog, the dog constantly being in the wrong position. And that's how you end up with sloppy training. So I'm going to speed this up a little bit. So sit. Good boy. So I'm going to put the retrieve down. Okay, so he's being a bit naughty here. He's not allowed to do this. So I'm going to bring him back around again. I'm going to be a bit firm with the lead. Sit. I'm going to put my retrieve out. I'm going to turn into him. Tug. I'm going to walk back. I'm going to turn around again. Sit up. Now, you see, I'm slightly ahead of him there. So I'm going to take a little step back. Slacken the lead. Split. Good boy. Good boy. Sit. Ah, 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 ah. Sit. So I was just clear there that I didn't want him jumping up. To be fair, he doesn't normally do that. Good boy. So left hand on the lead, right hand retrieve, tug, and we're back to heel. Okay, sit. Okay. He likes this retrieve, you can see that. Okay, so a few key points here. Let's turn around again. I'm going to come back, put it in my pouch. It gets it out of the way. When I'm doing stuff like this, I like these training pouches because they're very quick and easy to access and get a few retrieves. And if I'm out and about using bigger dummies, I tend to use a game bag, um, which is slightly different. So uh, I want the dog pointing directly forwards. I don't want his feet ahead of mine. We should be about level. If the dog's not straight, I want to straighten him up before I send him. I also want eye contact. Now, this is a controversial thing. Some people don't like their dogs to take their eyes off the retrieve. I like my dog to make eye contact. I work on marking in a different way later on. But at a novice level, dogs that don't make regular eye contact with you are more likely to go wrong long term. Forget about what some advanced handers do. They send their dogs on the name. They don't like to take their eyes off the mark when they throw the retrieve. But at a novice level, you're more likely to get into trouble that way. I'd rather the dog slightly miss mark than get in the habit of running in. So that, that's how I tend to work. So this is our basic retrieve, straightforward, out and back. All those key points, toes, dog facing forwards. That's our very basic retrieve out and back. Okay, so I'm going to talk about a back retrieve now. Good boy. So a back retrieve, here, sit, is literally what it means. Okay, this is when the dog is facing you. And we're going to put a retrieve behind the dog. And the dog is going to be facing us. And we're going to teach the dog to turn with our right and our left hand. This is something I try and put into some of my other videos. But basically, if I say back with my right hand, I expect the dog to turn to my right and go back. If I say back with my left hand, I expect the dog to turn left and go back. Don't get that mixed up with lefts and rights. That's something completely different. So on the back retrieve here, we're going to put a retrieve behind him. Now, when you put a retrieve behind them, they will always try and turn around and face the, uh, the retrieve. So you have to work really, really hard at being probably a little bit firm to make sure that the dog doesn't go around. And that, again, is where your training line comes in place. 
because you can manipulate the dog from that position. So I'm gonna put the retriever out. Now, when I throw this, I can almost guarantee he'll probably move a little bit. He's not used to me now doing it like this because we've done this some time ago. So I'm gonna put the retriever behind him. And if he ends up wonky, I will straighten him up. So I'm gonna put this retriever behind him. Okay, now I'm actually gonna move back because I'm worried about staying on camera a little bit. So I'm gonna do what I call a recall sit. And that's how I teach the dog to approach me. Okay, so that retrieves probably slightly off camera. I need to make sure I stay back a little bit further for you guys. So what I do now is the dog is straight. The retrieve is directly behind the dog. There's a nice straight line. Retrieve, dog, me. Okay, if that retrieve lands wonky, your dog isn't going to learn to run in a straight line when he turns around. So where that retrieve lands is very, very important. And if it's not directly behind the dog in line with a fence of some sort, by the way, I would always be doing these early retrieves using some sort of ruler line, whether it be a track, a fence, to help guide the dog in a straight line. So at this point now, I'm gonna take a little, he's thinking, why am I waiting so long? Um, what I'm gonna do is now take a little step to my right, and I'm gonna be pushing my hand out slightly to the side to start with. At an advanced level, I just push for the sky. But to help him go the right way, I take a step to my right. And it's out to the side. Really, sit, good boy. Dead, ah, 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 good boy. So what I was gonna say is, um, at the beginning it's like probably three o'clock and nine o'clock when I'm pushing out. And the step to the right or the left, depending on which side I'm gonna do, helps that. So I'll speed that up here. Good boy, good boy, good boy, sit. So I'll put the retrieve behind him again. Now I'm gonna do the other side this time. So I've actually taken a big step to my left. So I can still throw with my right. If you're right-handed and you throw with your left, the dummy could end up anywhere. So I'm going to throw that back behind him. And the reason why I've thrown it on that side is, look, did you see how he turned to look over that left shoulder? That is now going to help me make sure that he goes left. Now sit. Now we've got a straight line here. This is our starting point. I take a step to my left. Lead now goes into my right hand and I'm going to use my left hand to send him back. Back. See how he turned that way. Good boy. Good boy. Sit. Ah, 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 ah. We don't do that, do we? Good boy. Good boy. Thank you. Dead. Heel. Heel. Good boy. Good boy. So I'll do it on the other side for you. Turn. Sit. Okay, so I'm going to throw it. So I've taken a big step to my left. Otherwise, you're clonking around the head when you throw the retriever. So I'm going to throw that back behind him. See, he's watched it that way. That's going to help you. Now I'm straight. Okay, he's not quite straight. So I'm just going to straighten him up a little bit. There we go. This is really important that that dog is always straight when you start. Because at an advanced level, if you get to that point, all your dog's hand signals are based off facing you straight. And if your dog is in a different position every time, it's like having a compass and then messing around with true north. It's like you could end up anywhere. And your dog is learning to go true right, true left, and true back 180. And if your dog is finding the retrieve in a different place every time, your dog won't learn to trust the signals. And although you might end up picking the retrieves, it tends to end up being messy. So we're gonna do that left hand. Little step to, little step to my left, that helps. And I'm gonna push out to the side. Right. So eventually I'm gonna be doing that. Good boy, sit, good boy, good lad. Little rub on the chest for you. Good boy, good boy, dead. Right, so I'm gonna speed it up this time, sit. Put the retrieve behind him. I'm gonna call him towards me first. Quick, quick. Little bit of hesitation there. Good lad, good boy. Sit, good boy, good boy. Dead, dead, good boy, heel. Right, so, sit. We've got two different retrieves there. We've got a straight retrieve, and then we've got our back retrieve. As soon as I can get him to turn on one side, I start teaching them to turn on the other side. Dogs often favor one side or the other. So if you find one side harder, just focus on doing that one to start with. Dummy, dog, you, step to the left or the right. Put the lead in the corresponding hand. So if you're gonna use your left hand, the lead needs to be in your right. If you're gonna use your right hand, lead, leads need to be in your left. Little step to the left or the right, and then push them round and back. As soon as I can do a straight retrieve, I'm teaching back retrieves on both sides. I tend to leave the lefts and rights until after I've taught the back retrieve. Left and rights are a lot easier, but they can interfere with the back retrieves. So I'm going to do that on another video. So 
if you're starting out or even if you've got an older dog and you're at the beginning, make sure that you just teach straight sends over a short distance, get all the parts right, then do some back retrieves again over a short distance, get those parts right. And then once you can do that really well, you can go on to the next stage. So for me, I do straight sends, back retrieves, and then lefts and rights. And we'll do the left and right in another video. If you want any training products, go through to our uh, uh, Facebook page, Spaniel Training Kit, where you can order stuff on there. Um, everything you see me use is available. Um, and if you want any help or guidance, I do my online training service. Um, so you can send me a message on Hampshire Spaniel Training. Anyway, I hope this video has been helpful and informative and I'll try and make many more for you. Don't forget, subscribe, like, any questions, put them in the description below and I'll do my best to help you guys. Happy training. Thank you.